Hello, welcome back to the course on our signal processing for music applications. This week, we are talking about the Fourier properties and theorems. And in this uh, programming uh, lecture, we're going to be using that to actually implement uh, the analysis of a sound using uh, the Fourier transform. And uh, we will take advantage of those properties to better understand uh, this uh, programming aspect of it. Okay, so let's first go to a terminal and we're going to be working within the SMS tools uh, kind of package. So we'll go to where we have uh, kept the SMS tools um, um, code that we downloaded from GitHub and we're going to be working from the workspace directory. Okay, so now we are within the workspace directory and now we can start uh, IPython. So today we're going to be using IPython, which is uh, an interactive shell that is very convenient for interactively calling uh, Python commands. Since we're going to be using matplotlib all the time, there is a way when we start IPython to uh, already import uh, matplotlib. So we do that by calling uh, pylab. Okay and this will execute uh, IPython and it already will be using the matplotlib as part of that. Okay, now we want to start typing Python but it's much easier to do it from a text editor. Okay, so here, here is uh, uh, our uh, gedit uh, text editor and I already typed some of the commands uh, of what I want to explain. So this is a very simple script in which I imported three packages. So NumPy, the standard array processing uh, package. Then I wanted to use a triangular function. So I got that from SciPy. Okay, so I imported that function. And I want to use the DFT uh, implementation in Python, the FFT algorithm. So I get that also from SciPy, from the FFT pack. Okay, now we declare, we create uh, a triangular function, an array of values that is a triangular shape. So I, I compute 15 samples of a triangular function. Then I call the FFT uh, algorithm. And here it's very important to notice that uh, the, the size of the input signal is 15 samples, is not a power of 2, even though we mention that in order to use the FFT algorithm, we require to have a length of a power of 2 signal. But this implementation of the FFT, when the input signal is not a power of 2, then it just implements the DFT, the standard implementation of the equation of the DFT, therefore it does not take uh, of the advantage of the, of the power of 2 and of the implementation of the FFT but so therefore we can use the FFT for any size of course we will have to try to use power of 2 when this is called very often and then after computing the spectrum capital X we obtain the magnitude and the phase of the spectrum okay so from IPython, we can execute this file. This file is in our uh, workspace directory. It's uh, test.py. Okay. So I can uh, uh, execute this script by just typing run and test. No need to type the .py because it knows that we are executing Python uh, files. Okay, so now it has executed these commands. It hasn't printed or plotted anything. It didn't ask for any uh, output in that way. But it has computed all these variables. So these variables are now known into the environment. So if we, for example, just type the, the variable x, it shows the array of our uh, triangular function that we have computed and we can plot it. If we plot x, so plot is the matplotlib uh, function. I don't need to make reference to the packet, but just directly the function plot, and I plot x. 
I display the triangular function going from 0 to 14. Okay. Uh, then uh, the magnitude and phase spectrum can also be plotted, so I just can plot mx, and this is the magnitude spectrum, okay, and this requires some explanation. The magnitude spectrum of a real function, like a triangular function, is symmetric. And here, there is a symmetry, but it may be a little misleading. The symmetry is around zero, and the way this has to be understood is as a circular buffer in which the center is uh, zero, and then the first half of the array are the positive values, and the second half of the array are the negative values. So in fact, the sample 14 is also the sample minus one. Okay, so this keeps repeating left and right, and therefore this uh, ending is the negative part. And then we can understand this symmetry very clearly. Okay? We can plot the phase spectrum by typing plot px, okay? and it shows uh, this quite complex uh, function which is kind of not so intuitive from what we talked about. When we analyze a real function, an uneven function like the triangular function, the phase should be zero. This was one of the sym symmetry properties of the DFT. And here, the phase is not zero. Why? Well, because our time signal, the triangular uh, signal was not centered ar uh, around zero. It had a shift operation. It had a shift of half of the triangular function. So from what we just talked about, the concept of centering around zero, in order to uh, compute the, a triangular function that is centered around zero, we have to place the triangle in a different way. Let's show that. In this uh, second file, I have added three lines that change the triangular function in a way to center it around zero. Okay, so after computing the triangular function, we are creating a variable, which we call FFT buffer, of the same size as x, all initialized with zeros. So mp.0 is a way to create an array of empty values. And then what we're going to do is locate the triangle around zero, which means that the first part of the buffer will be the end of the triangle. So this uh, way of accessing the array basically says that from seventh location of the input signal to the end are placed at the beginning of the FFT buffer. And the second part of the triangle, the second half, is, lo is placed at the uh, end. Uh, no, this is the first part of the triangle is placed at the end of the FFT buffer. And then we do exactly what we did before. We compute this array that has the triangle now centered around zero and we obtain the magnitude and phase spectrum. So again, this file is in our workspace, so we can just execute it. Run test uh, one. Okay. And now what we are interested in is in the FFT buffer. So if we show, we plot the FFT buffer, Okay, we see the triangle, but placed around zero. What does that mean? Well, the center of the triangle, the value one, is now at location zero. This is the second half of the triangle, and the first half is now placed in negative values. Now it's placed at the end. This would be the negative samples of n. Okay. And if we now look at the magnitude spectrum, well, it should be the same than before. It's exactly the same. The magnitude does not change. 
what we have done is a shifting operation. We have moved the triangle from 0 to 14 to minus 7 to 7. So the, ma the magnitude does not change. But the phase should be very much different. Okay, so let's plot the phase. Well, that looks strange, but let's uh, understand the axis to understand it. This is, uh, there is this uh, factor, exponential factor here of e to the minus 15. So basically, these numbers are zero. No? There is some numerical error, but these are tiny, tiny values. It's not zero to four, but it's zero to four to the minus 15. Okay? So basically, this means that this is all zeros. And of course, there was some numerical uh, error that uh, is caused by um, when we, we use computers. So anyway, so this is zero phase uh, result. Okay, okay now um, let's uh, look at a real signal. Let's do the Fourier analysis of a real signal. And I, for that, I created another file, test2, in which we basically use some of the same code, but added code in order to be able to uh, read a sound file. Okay, so we have the same packages, but here we need to include uh, a, a file that is within the SMS tools uh, directory called uh, util functions that has the uh, WAF read function. Okay, the WAF read function is a function that reads a file and then it converts to floating point numbers normalized to minus one to one. So this is what we needed. That's why we import that. And then instead of having some fixed values, we have uh, defined some variables that allows us to define any sec uh, section or any type of uh, m values that we want, any uh, any duration of uh, of uh, input signal. So what we do here is a way to compute the duration of the second half and of the first half of the input signal. So we can then center things around zero, and this allows us to handle even and odd uh, size uh, values. Okay, so this is just simply to variables that uh, uh, allow us to decide where is the middle of a window. Then we read the input signal. We read a file, the Soprano uh, WAF file, and we store it into a variable x and the sampling rate f, uh, fs. And then we're just going to take a fragment of that. So we're going to take from the x array, we're going to take the values that go from 5,000 to 5,000 plus the size of the window, so 501. And then we will multiply by a window, a smoothing window. We'll talk that more in uh, next week. Okay, so now we have a signal X1, which is a short signal, 501 samples. And then we do what we did before. We're gonna center this uh, signal around zero in the FFT buffer. And this is all this code uh, does that. And then we just compute the result. So let's uh, execute that. So this is test two. And let's first uh, plot uh, the original sound that uh, we read. So the whole um, soprano sound. Okay, this is the whole a soprano sound and it has uh, more than 50,000 samples, close to 60,000 samples. And this is normalized uh, from minus one to one, so it's not that loud. So it goes to uh, from minus 0.10 to uh, 0.15. Now let's plot the FFT, well, let's first plot the fragment that we chose, the X1. X1 is the fragment that we chose from the from the singing voice already windowed by this moving humming window. So these are the 501 samples. And now we have to put them in 
the FFT buffer centered around zero. Okay, so we plot the FFT buffer, and this now is the same uh, fragment of the sound but centered around zero. The second half of the signal is uh, in the positive time, and the first part is in the negative time. Okay, and now of course we can plot the um, spectrum, we can plot the magnitude spectrum. Okay, so this is the magnitude spectrum, and here we see the symmetry that we saw before. So this is the positive part at the beginning, and here is the negative part at the end. And we have 501 samples. Of course, we only need half of it because the others is uh, redundant. And if we look at the phase, we can plot the x, and this is the phase, which looks quite noisy, and now we will try to improve that, but uh, this uh, is uh, what it is. And it's uh, anti-symmetric, so the first half is the negative values of the second half. Okay. Now, um, in order to use the FFT, what we want to be able to do is take the, uh, a power of two uh, length uh, uh, signal without having to change the fragment of sound we actually take. So what we, we can do is, well, here the FFT size, N, can be independent of the fragment of sound we take. So here, um, so for example, now we can have N independently of M, and N will be the FFT buffer. In order to be able to use a part of two uh, and the FFT, so we can just, for example, put 1024. Now, this will compute um, the FFT, and it will use the FFT algorithm of 1024 samples, even though uh, we are only going to take 501 samples. Let's try to understand that a little bit. So we will uh, run the test 2. Now, the fragment of the input signal is the same, but if we plot the FFT buffer, well, now we see that the second half is stored in the same way at the, at the positive side, and the, the, the beginning of the sound is placed at the end, at the negative samples, and the whole middle are zeros. This is the zero padding. Okay, so these are zeros uh, that we have added in order to fill up up to the FFT size, and this is good. Okay, now if we look at the output at MX, well, it will look similar to the previous one, but in fact there are more samples now. There are a thousand and twenty-four samples. And maybe here we are not seeing the, the difference, but now, for example, if we plot it in, in dB, we might be able to see more information. Okay, so instead, the magnitude spectrum, one of the things we mentioned is that we uh, want to display it in a logarithmic scale. So what we're going to do is multiply 20 times the log, log 10, uh, which is a NumPy function, of the absolute value of x. Okay, so now if we uh, save it and run it again, okay, run test 2, and we plot the magnitude spectrum, it looks very different. Okay, it looks, uh, the, the, of course, the vertical axis has changed a lot, here we see again the symmetry. Of course, here again now it doesn't make sense to plot the whole thing, so typically what we're going to do is we're just going to plot the values that go from, the, from zero, from the beginning, to half of the FFT size, which is going to be 512. Okay, so 512 is half of the spectrum, and this is what we normally plot. Okay, this is the magnitude spectrum. And for the phase, 
one thing that we also talked about when we talked about the properties is that it's good to do an unwrapping of the face. So what we're going to do is call the unwrap function okay, from NumPy and this will allow us to visualize this uh, phase spectrum better. Just uh, if, you, if you remember, the, the phase spectrum looked very strange. Now, if we execute with uh, the unwrapping function, let's execute again that, and we show the, the face, well, looks much nicer. This, uh, and in fact, we should only be watching the first half. So, in fact, let's watch the uh, part that goes from 0 to 512. Okay. And this is the phase spectrum. And this looks, uh, as I said, much nicer. It lets unwrap the phase. And it, uh, it does this uh, pi, 2 pi unwrapping, so it looks much smoother. Okay, so this is the normal uh, way that we will be computing the, uh, the spectrum of a signal. And this would be of, uh, in this case, of a real sound. Uh, so this is a pretty good uh, a code that implements uh, the Fourier transform of a signal using the FFT algorithm and using uh, some of the properties that we mentioned and understanding the issues of symmetry. Okay, and that's all I wanted to say. So basically, uh, we have uh, used uh, some of the Fourier theorems and properties, so please uh, make sure that you understand them, especially the concept of symmetry, zero phase uh, windowing, the concept of uh, TV scale, uh, the concept of uh, unwrapping the phase, etc., so that when we compute the Fourier transform, we can actually visualize and understand the values in a, in a good way. We use IPython, which uh, becomes very uh, helpful, and so we can use a text editor for uh, some aspects and then for like the plotting and to uh, display some things interactively. Uh, we can use the IPython command, so that's pretty good. And we're starting to use uh, a number of packages, well, apart from NumPy and Matplotlib, uh, the FFT is part of SciPy, so that's going to be a very useful package for us. And that's all. So we have try to, to use some of the properties we talked about in the context of programming, so in the context of actually practical use. And we have basically developed a piece of code that implements uh, the Fourier analysis of a fragment of a sound. So we're starting to get something interesting. Uh, so I hope uh, you continue and that uh, I will see you next class. Bye-bye.